it reads, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. You may be seated. And I'm speaking this morning on a spiritually refreshing. Because the church does need a spiritually refreshing. And, and let me say this here because I know that Many are filled with the Holy Spirit, but then there are some that are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's for both, amen, <clears throat> because the ones that are filled with the Holy Spirit sometimes need a spiritually refreshing. And those that are not filled, then that means that they need it completely, hallelujah. So it goes together because, you know, one can't do without the other one. How many of you know that? Because then we have half of a church that's flowing with God. And God wants a whole church that's flowing together on one accord. And I don't think that God will ever be satisfied. And you should never be satisfied until you're flowing and flowing and flowing until you run over, until you're bubbling up. Amen. And, and, and you, know the, you know, the thing about this is that nobody can do this for you. Nobody can do this for you. You have to be a seeker of the fullness of God. I, 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 when I received the baptism, and, 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 you know, a lot of times people say, well, why do you talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit so much? Because I know that there was a time. I know that the body of Christ will never be what it should be until we do what God wants us to do, until we're flowing in the spirit completely and on a daily basis because the ones that are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are not praying in the Holy Spirit. They are not letting their rivers flow. They, and you know, there, you know, I, 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 <clears throat> go over to, hold your finger there, go over to Psalms uh, 46. Michael hit one of my scriptures this morning. Psalms 46. <clears throat> but notice something. I, I'm, I'm really going to verse to verse 4, but I'm going to read down. It says, God is, a ref, is our refuge a, and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar, roar and be troubled, though a mountain shake with the swellings thereof. Verse 4 is where I'm headed. It says, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the plate, the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in her. Is in it. God is in the midst of her. How many of you know that God? How many? Can we, how many of us can really say that God is in the midst of us? Look, look. If God is not in the midst of us this morning, I want to go home. I, I, we, I say that if God is not in our midst this morning, it's no use of us being here. Hallelujah. Because we are wasting our time. And guess what? I don't know about you. But my time is important. I don't want to waste my time. When I come into the house of God, I don't want to think about nobody else. I don't want to think about nothing else. All I want to do is focus on God. Because I have needs. 
and I want God to meet my every need. I, look, there is not a one of us in here this morning that don't have a need. I, it may not be like the other person, but you got a little need. Hallelujah. You got some kind of need. And the thing about it, the Bible says that God is our refuge. God is a very present help in time of what? Trouble. So no matter what kind of trouble you're in, the Holy Ghost is able to help you in that trouble. Come on now. Because he's here. Hallelujah. I say the Holy Ghost is here. He's the third person of the Godhead. And not only is he here, but he wants to be in us. Hallelujah. He wants to dwell in us. Man, I love this here, here, here. Because when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, I cannot say it was on. Hallelujah. It's on. Hallelujah. They're like some people say, it's on. Because it makes a big difference in your life. Some people, what you talking about? Talking about that Holy Ghost. It's something that when the people say that when they get in you, it make you act a little strange. <laughs> uh, I know some people scared to act a little strange, you know. Some people so dignified, they kind of scared to get a little out of place. Or they kind of scared to raise their hands or, or they kind of scared to dance around. But don't you know when the Holy Ghost come up on you, you don't have no more. Look, you don't have no more say of what you want to do or how you want to act. And I think that this is the problem. We worried about how we going to act in church. And I ain't talking about acting no fool now, hallelujah. I'm not talking about being out of place, amen. But I'm talking about let the Holy Ghost have his way in your life. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Spirit do what he want to do. We got to get out of the way sometimes. We got too many church people want to get in the way of God. Want to get in the way of the Holy Spirit when he is one that's in control. He's in control from the pulpit to the back door. Hallelujah. He ought to be in control. If he ain't in control, something wrong. <laughs> something wrong when he ain't in control. Because then we got too many selves in the way. Too many I, me, myself, what I want, how I want it. But when the Holy Ghost steps in, Oh, my God. There is a river. The streams where oh, shall make glad the city of our God. There is something that goes on amongst the people of God where people, we ought to be so glad. We ought to be the most happiest people on the world, in the world. We ought to mind coming in here shouting and praising God, getting in the spirit. Because, you know, sometimes that's the, this is the only moment that some of us have. Quiet. Everything. We, 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 we put everything on the side. We tune everything out. When you come in church, learn how to tune everybody out and everything out. Oh, come on now. Because I'm telling you, you learn how to tune everything out and everybody. Because guess what? Some people going to make you miss from getting in the spirit. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Learn. I, I, I can't. I, look, I'm saying this for purpose and reason. Learn. And the reason why I say that, because we got to learn most of the stuff. We do have to learn it. You go to school for 12 years to learn how to be whatever you want to be, right? Come on. I, no, 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 right. You go to school for 12 years to the 12th grade to learn to be whatever you want to be. And some, purple, some people, they stick with it, and some people, they don't stick with it. <laughs> yeah. And that's the same way it is. That's the natural. It's the same way it is about the spiritual thing. There are some people that stick with it, and there are some people that don't stick with it. The people that don't stick with it is because sometimes we allow other people to pull us off and to pull us away from the things of God because we get off our focus. And we got to learn to stay on our focus, and this is 
Because when you seek in God and you want everything that he got for you, you purpose and you make up in your mind that I'm getting it. And let me say this here too. Because the whole church needs to be full of the Holy Ghost. But let me, I, I said that to say this here. A lot of people think sometimes that I've got to get ready, myself ready to receive the Holy Ghost. Baby, you will never get ready to receive the Holy Ghost. Because it's impossible for you to do. You can't do it. Because some of us are like I was. I had so much a mess in my life that God just had to do what he needed to do with me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost in the midst of all of my mess. And there are some people saying, I'm waiting to God. I'm waiting till I stop sinning so I can get filled with the Holy Ghost. It'll never happen. Why I said that? Because the Holy Ghost is the convictor of sin. And if he's not there, to convict you of the things that you're doing wrong in your life. You, there is no conviction. Now, some natural things we just automatically know I'm doing, I'm wrong. But there are some things that the Holy Ghost has to help us on, help us get out of these things. Because if not, we still going to have shallow life. Our lives are never going to be what God wanted to be. So stop saying I got to wait until I get holy. Because guess what? It ain't going to help. It ain't going to happen. So you might as well make, we might as well make up in our mind. Then I'm going to get on the boat with everybody else. Jump in the river of the sweet Holy Spirit and let him work in your life. Hallelujah. I say jump in the river of the sweet Holy Spirit and let him work. I'm telling you, my God, my God, he want to do some stuff. I say the Holy Spirit wants to do some things in our lives. Amen. So it says, that verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Good God Almighty, look at here. God shall help us. And guess what? And that's right, late. <laughs> and that's and that's right late. Is y'all reading with me? Is y'all following along with me? Because some of us want to say <laughs> we want to say later, late, late. No, 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 no. Early, say early with me. Hallelujah. Just say early. God want to help me early. Hallelujah. God want to work in our midst early. Hallelujah. God want to turn our situation around early. Hallelujah. Early. Early. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Early. God want to do some things early. Why we want to always put God all put God last? Go over to uh, John um, six sixty three. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. It says, it is the spirit that what? That do what? It's the spirit that quickens, right? It says the flesh profit what? Nothing. The flesh profit us nothing. I said John 6, 63. It's, and it says the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit. You know, when we stand in this pulpit and we speak God's word, we're not speaking on our own. We're taking God's word and we're giving it to you. This is spirit that we, that we minister to you in the spiritual realm. It says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit 
and they are what? They life. So therefore, when you receive the word of God, what are you receiving? You what? Life from who? Life from God, right? And that's right early, right? Hallelujah. We're receiving life. Today, some people might be receiving life for the very first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now go to Romans 8 and 6. I'm a, I want to go through a few scriptures right quick. Romans 8 and 6. It says, for to be carnal minded is what? But to be what? Spiritually minded is what? Life. Lord Jesus. How many of y'all want some peace? <laughs> how, many, how many of us in here need some peace? I think we all need some peace. Hallelujah. And we definitely want some life. Hallelujah. Because when we die and leave here, we definitely want to be with Christ, right? So we need life now. And we need some peace now. Because, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on and people don't have no peace. You ought to thank God for the peace that he given to you. Amen. The peace that you got is not of the world. The peace that I give is not from the world. It's of God. God is the only one that gives you true peace. The world gives you peace, but it, it comes right back and snatch it right away. Amen. It don't last long. Let me say it like that. It don't last long. But the peace that you that God gives you, it'll last you throughout eternity. Amen. It'll last you through eternity. It says, go skip down to verse 11. It says, but the spirit, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also do what? So it's the spirit that quickens the Holy Spirit. Let me say it like this here. I know the spirit quickens. Because before I got born again and before I got saved, I was dry, I was dead, I had no life, I had no hope. But from the moment, I say, but see, Sometimes it's kind of hard to explain spiritually things to people. It's kind of hard. Even though to you or to me, it's real. And it's like Christ. When he walked this earth, he knew everything. He had everything. And therefore, he was trying to impart something to his disciples. And then he turned around and wanted his disciples to impart something to others. And then he turned around, the disciples turned around and left it with us and wanted us to impart something to others. Oh, my God. <sighs> this thing is real, people. This is no game. This is no play play game here. This thing is real. And see, I, I talk about a lot about the spiritual thing because we ain't really supposed to be living in the flesh. We're supposed to be living in the spiritual realm. And until you try to start living in the spiritual realm the way God wants you to live in the spiritual realm, you're not going to live like that. Because if you're not in the word of God, getting the word, trying to learn to live spiritually, you'll never be able to live spiritually and let the Holy Ghost flow through you the like he want to. And oh my God, the Holy Ghost want to do something in his people. Jesus did not die and go to the cross for us to sit around and play patty cake on Sunday, on Wednesday, all during the week. Mm -mm. No. No. Our lives, God does want us going higher. Our lives should be an example to somebody else. And the thing about it is that 
you have to let the Holy Ghost. There are things that you don't know, but the Holy Ghost knows. And he will reveal. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost reveals his secrets to his people. Hallelujah. He reveals things to us. But you got to stay tuned in. Say, I got to stay tuned in. Oh, yeah, you got to stay tuned in. Stay tuned in. Yeah, you got to stay tuned in. And guess what? You got to make yourself. Sometimes I tell myself, Beverly, you got to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to read. You're going to pray. You got to do this. Because if you don't, and I'm telling you the truth, time will go by. Listen to me. Because sometimes some of us get to the point where we are so dry. And we wondering, is we still saved? Am I still do I still am I still walking with God? Don't let the enemy trick you now. Because the enemy will make you think you ain't saved until you go on back out in the world. The devil is a liar. That's why you got to get a hold to yourself. Jump back in the word. Hallelujah. Jump back in the word. You got to jump back in the word. And don't think, don't even think about it. Get up and get in the word right quick. Because the enemy is trying to play with you. Not only with you, but he's trying to play with your family. Come on now, because look, if you're the strong one in your family, you're the one holding this thing up. Hallelujah. You're the one holding. You're the one standing in the gap. Y'all say you're the one holding this thing up. Because there ain't many people in the family trying to stand up for God and trying to live for God the way we should be living for God. We live half-heartedly. God don't want us living half-heartedly. He want us walking up rightly. Hallelujah. People, it's time that we get serious about God more and more in these last days because we see too many things happening. Hallelujah. We see too many things happening. So remember that the spirit of God dwells inside of you. Now let's go to um, um, Romans 14. We right here. Romans 14, 17. Look at this. Look what the words say. Mm. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Lord Jesus, look at y'all. Y'all got it? Do y'all see this here? Look what, look what the words say. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But what? Righteousness and peace. Don't get mad at me when I'm jumping and shouting and having joy. Because that's, that's part of my spiritual heritage. Amen. He said, it's peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. My God, we ought to be having some joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, y'all got to understand this here. We ought to be having some peace. And look, let me tell you, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Look at it. I can't come to your house and give you no peace. I can't come to your house and give you no joy. But the Holy Ghost, when you're going through situations, and when you're going through problems, and when your back is up against the wall, oh, see, you got to know, learn how to tap in. This is why it's so important that you know the word of God. Because guess what? The Holy Ghost can give you something that I can't give you. I can pray for you. I can give you a good hug, but that's the furthest I could go. That's the furthest I could go. But the Holy Ghost, <laughs> he'll come, and he'll love on you, and he'll squeeze you, and he'll tell you everything going to be all right. Even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of a storm, the Holy Ghost is right there telling you, fear not, fear not, for I'm with you. Fear not, I'm with you. I got you. Be of good cheer, 
For I've overcome this world. And if I've overcome this world, you can overcome too through the power of the Holy Ghost that I've put on the inside of you. Man, oh. Jesus. We got to learn how to flow with the Holy Ghost. And God made it available. See, 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 you got to understand something. Jesus is not just down that cross for no reason. He went through something. He went through something to get the Holy Ghost to come back so he can live with us every day of our lives. He went through something. He went through something. So, my God, if he don't went through it already, you ought to be able to enjoy it because he want us to enjoy it. Then he say peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Jesus, sometimes I just want to know what is it going to take to make God's people go on with it, to do what he wants us to do, no matter what. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm. Man, that'll make you want to get a shout on. I say that'll make you want to dance in the spirit. Hallelujah. I said that'll make you want to that'll make you want to dance in the spirit because peace and joy and the Holy Ghost when you're thinking about it and you're flowing with God, Lord have mercy, and you put everybody out and tune everything out and you don't bow to God. Woo. My God, my God, ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it, Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, ain't nothing like. God Almighty. There's a joy that God's people have. I know sometimes we don't understand it because a lot of people have not experienced it. But there's a joy that we have. And guess what? The world can't take it away. <clears throat> and the world can't do nothing about it. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, look, don't y'all pay me no mind. Because I'm going to be me no matter what. I can't help myself because when I think about it, when I think about the goodness of God, when I think about all he done done for me, when I think about how he done lift me up, when I think about what he brought me out of, when I think about it, all I got to do is think about it. See, because like some people say, you can't say nothing if you don't know my story. You can't say nothing if you don't know where I done come from. You can't say nothing if you don't know the three-room shack I used to be in. You can't say nothing if you don't know there was time when I had food to eat. You can't say nothing. <laughs> Woo! Hey! And let me tell you, if God did it for me, oh! Oh, if God did it for me, mm. that's why I love people like where I come from, because I got something to tell them, that God will bring you out. 